Hi guys, welcome to the next video in my budget quadcopter build series. Sorry that this one took so long, but I was actually waiting on the budget receiver to arrive. Now, I already had a Tyrannus radio and a D4R2 FreeSky receiver, but the purpose of this video was to try and see what is the minimum amount of money you need to spend to get a 250 race class quad into the air. And there was no real point doing that if I was going to be buying an $85 quadcopter kit and then putting a $200 radio and a $20 receiver on it. I ordered this Flysky FST6 transmitter for $50. I think it was $51. And that also came with the receiver. So you can see the specs, what we get here. I won't bother to read through them. Basically what I've heard is that the gimbals on these are nice and smooth and the menu system is easy to navigate and that it has all the power that we need. We've got six channels. We've got a few switches for arming and disarming and all that kind of good stuff mode changing and uh, it's a 2.4 gigahertz radio so let's open it up and have a look at what we get okay so there we have it we have our radio and I have to say the gimbals feel like pretty similar to what's on my Tyrannus at least if not if not the same then similar uh, it's not a notched throttle it's a smooth throttle which uh, you're either going to like or not for me I don't really I'm not experienced enough yet to say I prefer one or the other. I guess after flying this one, I will know. Um, we've got one, two, three, four switches and two analog knob controls. We've got uh, trim switches and we've got our little push and turn menu switch. OK, cancel and our power button. Now this didn't come with batteries. It takes eight AA batteries. So then also we get our receiver because the transmitter is not really any good without a receiver. And this we have to mount on the quad. So there's our receiver. It's a Flysky model FSR6B and it's a six channel receiver. It doesn't have a uh, CPPM like the FreeSky ones do, which means that if we want to use six channels, we've got to actually hook a cable up for all six channels. Yeah, we need to install this onto the quad. So I guess that is what we are going to do next. Okay, so here we are with our quad uh, left at the stage that it was at in my last video. We have uh, the ESCs, the motors, the PDB wired up and the CC3D with our cables going to our ESCs. Um, and the last thing we need to do to actually make this thing be able to fly line of sight is to install the receiver. Now, this is the top plate. You can see the four holes here, which are for the camera mount. So ideally, we are going to want to mount our receiver underneath on the top frame here so that it's going to sit something like that and then obviously our antenna is going to stick up through one of these holes here with a cable tie it's a it's a bit of a weird small antenna uh, but we can work with that no problem at all. So what I'll probably suggest is that we actually secure this with some Velcro. And I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but this is the actual genuine Velcro brand. And on the box, it actually says industrial strength. The difference between this and the standard Velcro is just the quality of the adhesive and the density of the actual Velcro itself. It's very strong. So. I think we'll have no issues securing our receiver with this. So all we have to do is just grab our receiver and cut a piece off 
that's going to stick on the bottom of the receiver. And then uh, we just cut the length. No need for tape measures. Eyeballs are good enough. And then obviously we want to make sure that that's clean, but it's brand new. So I'm going to assume that it doesn't have any oils or too much dust. Even though where I live in Dubai, there's a lot of dust. And then uh, we just stick that on. And this is what's good about the industrial strength stuff. Like immediately that's stuck real good. Like it's not going to peel up on the corners. Like it's very good. And then uh, for the part on the frame, I just want to, I'll, I'll probably make it uh, a little bit bigger than the square that I cut for the receiver just so that we get the maximum stick on the frame because there's the routed out parts of the frame and uh, obviously that's less surface area for it to stick. So again, eyeball measuring. So obviously it needs, it can't cover these, these holes for the frame. Okay. Now to me, that looks pretty good. It will probably be prudent to like, give this a wipe with some alcohol or something like that. But I've waited for so long to get this quad finished. I couldn't be asked. In all honesty, that's the kind of shortcut you take that you regret later on. So now you can see that if we stick our transmitter on, that's, that's not going anywhere. That's like, like difficult to pull off. And the reason why we're just doing a temporary fix like this, like not hot glue or something like that is because, you know, part of, of flying quads is, is crashing quads. And uh, when you need to do repairs, you need to take the top frame off. And obviously it's much easier if you can just pull the Velcro off and take the top frame off. So that's my thinking behind that. If anyone has a better solution, I'm interested to hear it. But for uh, what I'm thinking, like that seems to seems like it's going to work well. And now we need to look at the wiring for this. And basically, this is going to plug into the CC3D here. And then these are going to plug into the output ports of each channel. Now you can see here that this particular one has a ground and a red, which I'm going to assume is a five volt output. So I would assume that this is going to be channel one. And then the next one along, which in my case is bright purple, is going to be channel two. It's labeled on here, battery and signal. And then we have a yellow one then a green one, confusingly another bright purple one, and then another yellow one. And for basic flight, we only need four channels, but then a couple of auxiliary channels is going to come in handy for things like arming and flight modes, buzzers, things like that. So this now is just going to plug into the CC3D. And now aside from having a battery plugged in, this quad has everything that it needs in order to fly. So let's just stick him together. Now it is unfortunate because we did all our wiring so neatly and, and now all this crappy wiring here uh, is not so neat. But we may figure out a way to neaten that up. Uh, but for now we just want to test that everything works. Now I'm just gonna plug a battery in just to test. Now obviously this battery is way too big and heavy for this quad. We'll get more onto the batteries later. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now that we have everything plugged in is we need to bind the receiver with the controller. Now, you get this little uh, jumper cable here, which I advise you put somewhere safe and don't lose. And what you have to do is you have to insert it into the one that says battery and you need to then power up, hopefully you can see that, but just here there's a flashing red light and this means that the receiver is ready to bind. So the next thing that we need to do is just grab the transmitter 
and hold down the bind key while powering up and now you can see hopefully on the video that that red light is now solid so now the binding is done we can turn the radio back off and we can disconnect the power remove the binding jumper and now the next step is to plug the CC3D into the computer flash it with the latest version of clean flight and then test the connection between the receiver and the CC3D. So let's move over to the computer bench and have a crack at that.